shoot at a bear, if he's under about 25 yards, you just lay that bow over flat and look right at the spot you want to hit and you'll kill your bear. He didn't tell me for till some time later that he went home, he doubted my word, he got up on the peak of his garage and he threw some milk jugs out in the yard and he said, I was absolutely astonished at how more accurately I would shoot by laying the bow over flat than I would in my straight up and down normal tournament style of shooting. And you know, just a few days later, in a tree stand all about a bow shot distance from his, I had the satisfaction of watching a big black bear come in from behind him, walking at a pretty good clip, walked out at about 25 yards, and as that bear came into his view, he laid that bow over, drew and shot, made a perfect shot, and collected a nice trophy, the bear going hardly distance, any distance at all. Remember, though, whether you use a gap method, whether you use Howard's peripheral vision, secondary vision, the single most important thing that you can remember when you're shooting at a game animal is to concentrate on the spot. When a fellow tells me he missed a game animal and shot about that far over his back, I tell him you were shooting at the whole animal. Pick a spot. Concentrate on that one spot. Try to black out everything else. Don't look at his antlers or don't look at the size of the animal. Pick a hair, a shadow, whatever you can. And Howard used to call it, bore a hole through it. Concentrate on it. Look right at that spot and you'll hit it most of the time. My son Tom has excellent Howard Hill form and Howard would have been proud of his shooting ability. Using Tom as a student, we'll go through the basic form and I'll cover each important step of that form, emphasizing that step, pointing out the correct procedure and you'll be able to see it with each shot as he executes that form properly. Now he takes the basic stand, his feet are about shoulder width apart, watch the bow arm comes up straight, he's into his anchor, the fingers move smoothly forward, his hand remains stationary. All right, do another shot. Smooth as he comes up into his anchor, fingers forward, the bow hand never moves. All right, another shot. Watch him draw and knock that arrow without looking down. He got it on his string. He's going to roll up. Everything synchronized. Watch one more arrow. Watch the straight line between the point of the arrow and the elbow, his hand at his anchor. All right, shoot one more. This time I'm going to have him slow it down just a little so that you can see the straight line elbow to the point of the arrow. Excellent form. Well, let's see if he learned to do it right. I'll have him do a little wing shooting here in just a minute, and we'll see how he does on that. With my other son, James, helping Tom on his wing shooting, let's see if Tom can change a dollar for you. That's great shooting, boys. With James's help, Tom shot a silver, a half, a quarter, and a dime for you. I think he learned to do it right. To transfer this form to moving targets, like Tom just shot, you must stay smooth and synchronized in all your movements. Again, I'm going to emphasize the 
static style. It won't work. You can't extend that arm and lock that shoulder in. You've got to keep fluid, and you do that by keeping the elbow bent. Draw in rhythm to the speed of your target. Swing with it. Don't draw and wait for it. Don't anticipate it. Let me illustrate that by talking about natural reaction. You're hunting along in thick cover. And as you come out into a small clearing, on the other side of the clearing, you see a buck head down, sneaking out to your left. Natural reaction, you would draw, move with the animal, maybe take a little neat lead and shoot. That's natural reaction. Or you're coming through thick timber and you step out into a clearing and spook a buck, he breaks to your left, left running as hard as he can. Natural reaction would swing the bow up, swing with him, substantially in front of him, and release the arrow. Natural reaction is what you generally would do unless you'd been conditioned otherwise. Natural reaction is great, but natural reaction by itself won't get it. What has to precede it is hours and hours of practice of this swing draw. Howard called it a swing draw or a spread draw. I like the term swing draw because that's just exactly what you do. You swing up on your target or you swing with your target. Most fellows that have had some experience in shotgun shooting usually pick this style up real readily. I've heard Howard in answer to how do you do it say, well, you just point and shoot them where they are. Other times he would go into detailed explanation. And that might sound like an open, oversimplification, but in reality, it's not. You draw with your target, point, and shoot. A friend of mine came to Wyoming several years ago, drew a sheep tag up there. And if I remember right, the only opportunity he had for a bighorn ram, he saw three rams coming down off the hill in a pretty good run. They were going to go through a clearing at about 40 yards. He told me himself that what he did was out of the corner of his eye, watch those rams approach, draw and anchor and hold on that opening. And when the first ram came into view, he released. And he missed not only the first one, but the second one and the last one. Now, I might have missed them too. But I believe you would have come a lot closer to collecting your trophy if when those rams came into view, you picked the one you were going to shoot at, picked the spot, swung your bow with it, took the lead, and shot. That's the only way that you can make those moving targets and hit them with any consistency. Now remember, this is called a swing draw. Howard used to practice it many times without a bow. I've seen him walking from his shop to the house and something would catch his eye and he would draw an imaginary bow and shoot at it. Or a bird would fly through the air. And with nothing in his hand, he would go through the motions. So you can practice it the same way. But remember, it's a swing draw. You want to stay fluid and keep your drawing speed, anchor, release, all synchronized to the movement of your target. You'll notice that sometimes when I shoot a moving target, my drawing hand just passes anchor. I don't lock in necessarily, but it passes anchor. And then occasionally you'll see my bow hand maybe come away. That's follow through. And that's permissible on moving targets. I want to demonstrate some moving targets for you. Shoot some discs out of the air. You watch closely my bow hand. Watch how I follow the target up with my eye, how I swing with it, and then shoot according to the position of the target. Follow it closely, and I think you'll get the idea of shooting the moving targets.
right. Let's do another one. You notice I came up with the target, followed it from down at James's hand. All right. All right, now watch as we shoot the next one. All right. This shooting style will work from just about any position. And if you've had much hunting experience, you know that you can get into some real unorthodox positions trying to make a shot on game. You remember earlier in the presentation, I emphasized the fact that whatever your body position, your shoulder stays at right angles to your target. If you'll notice, in a sitting down position like this, I'll have to bring the bow from behind, but it is still the swing draw as I come up. I basically use that form in all these positions. You watch and you'll see it's possible to shoot from the most unorthodox positions with the Howard Hill style. Both knees. One knee. Seated. If you'll faithfully practice this form as I've shown you, you'll soon be shooting your bow in that same cool, casual style as enjoyed by Howard Hill. You'll also be amazed at how accurate this style is on even the most intricate targets. Let's see what we can do with an aspirin. That, my friends, is hitting them like Howard Hill.